the video four here. So we're looking again at Renaissance art. What were some of the goals? What were some of the things that made it important? Realism and expression. Here you see the expulsion from the garden in 1427. You notice I had to edit a little bit for you. Notice classical times meaning what? Greco-Roman, nice. Here you see perspective. Three is classicism. Greco-Roman influence. Again, secular, of the world, not of related to the church. Humanism. Notice it's a person standing on their own, reflection of the power of the individual. There is symmetry and balance to the paintings and the sculptures of the time. Again, number four, emphasis on the individuals. Here you see a duke and duchess painting. Again, notice the people are in the forefront and everything else is kind of in the background. The geo geometrical arrangement of figures. Notice the background. I love what's back here. Pretty cool, right? You get a triangle within a triangle. You get the light and the shadow softening. You see examples here. I love this. It was the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa or a Da Vinci self-portrait. Pretty cool. All right, uh, what happens, and you can know the stuff on top. Renaissance starts here and travels north through Germany and then slowly but surely heading through Paris. What factors led to the beginning of the Renaissance in Northern Europe? Uh, basically the same thing as Italy. The northern population recovered from the plague. The Hundred Years is war is finally over. Cities are growing. And when cities are growing, people are buying stuff. Merchants becoming wealthy. How do you prove you're wealthy? With swag. How do you prove yourself swag? In the Renaissance, you buy fancy paintings. Especially in England and France. What helps all these ideas spread? The printing press. We will spend a whole separate day on the printing press. All right, uh, invention of movable type facilitated changing ideas much faster. So it sped it up. The success of the printing meant that books became cheaper. Once books become cheaper, literacy increases. Once literacy increases, ideas obviously move back and forth. Spread news quickly and enable people to follow debates. Once you're involved in the debate, you pick a side, you make a good thesis statement. And what's interesting is it's the first time you really need censorship because these books are out there and people are having ideas that they can debate about. Lower the price of books. Again, more books. Number of books go up, price goes down. Pretty simple. They were written in the vernacular, the language of the day. So people who had no classic education in Latin or Greek or Roman could read these books. Again, literacy on its way up. Who are some of the studs of this process? Petrarch is, again, a humorist, a scholar. He assembled Greek and Roman writings. He writes some of his own stuff. There's Albrecht Durer, who's, again, another famous painter and artist. He liked to actually do stuff with woodcuts. Those, again, his works were not religious but showed classic Greek and Roman mythology and realistic landscapes. My favorite here is John van Eyck, uh, a Dutch painter. This is amazing how realistic it is. Look at back here, look at here. You can see oranges on the side. That's the detail that comes from here, amazing. Right, like they're actually reflected in the painting. That's this up here, amazing. The shoes, amazing. Even little dog, your little dog Toto, too. Here's another one of his paintings. I could probably convince a third of you that that's a picture. Here's some of the details. Uh, the Elder, Scenes of Everyday Life. Here's another one's Proverbs, the Triumph of Death. Realism, Individual Characteristics. Taught morals, illustrated proverbs, and secretly kind of complained about Spanish rule over his country. Here's a good list. I might pause it here and copy down. Here's a couple of Italian artists. Here you see art artists throughout, and notice the direction they go. 
they go north, all right? We either get the writers, Erasmus, and this is kind of connects us from the Renaissance to the Reformation. Other guy, Sir Thomas More, he wrote a book called Utopia, which we'll talk about in class. It was like of an ideal place, a place that didn't really exist. And you should recognize this guy, William Shakespeare, an English writer, again, of the Renaissance. Still huge impact to today. New trends in writing, vernacular, Petrarch, Boccaccio. Uh, you've got examples of women Renaissance artists, another female poet. Erasmus, he was trying to get the Bible in the vernacular, and we've already talked about Sir Thomas More. We already looked at this. I love this painting.